I forgot to set my TV down there. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of our SW Universe mode. This is our next episode of Adrenaline. And of course we are building up now towards the big Shabby Mania pay-per-view coming up for you as a big finale to this universe in a couple of weeks' time. Some massive build-up coming up for you tonight. Right, we're going to start tonight's show with a one-on-one -on -one match between Shibata and Timothy Thatcher. Now this one, of course, has continued to build up to our big six-man elimination table match we have planned for you at Shabby Mania. Of course, it will be Japanese Strong Style versus Ring Camp alongside, of course, Oni Lorcan. Last week, we saw Sekimoto beat Walter one-on-one. -on -one. And can Japanese Strong Style here continue to build up the momentum? If Shibata can get a victory here over Thatcher, or can Thatcher turn things back around and sort of... Um, Try and get some momentum for themselves, really, because if Japanese Strong Style walk into that pay-per-view with three singles victories in three weeks against their opponents, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them, isn't it? They'll have that mental edge above Ring Camp and Oni Lorcan. So, Source, like we said, uh, we're doing singles matches for this one to build up for it, for the pay-per-view, which means we saw Sekimoto versus Walter last week. We've got Shibata versus Thatcher here, and then next week we will see Oni Lorcan one-on-one with Minoru Suzuki, which is going to be an awesome match. Real stiff bout, that one. Oh, dropped the controller. Uh, but tonight we've got some more action for you. We've got two more matches in the PJ Toby Tag Classic. Motor City Machine Gun to take on Sanjay Dutton, Jay Lethal. And then later on this evening, Brian Kendrick and Paul London take on a surprise team that PJ Toby has put together for us. We've also got that Feast or Fired match this evening that I mentioned last episode. We've got Shark Boy, Chavo Guerrero, and Enzo Amore. The winner gets an opportunity next week against Samoa Joe for the Adrenaline Championship. The loser essentially leaves SWE for good. We've got another Cruiserweight Elimination Chamber qualifier this evening as Ricochet takes on Leo Rush for a chance to join both Rey Mysterio Jr. and Roderick Strong in that historic first ever Cruiserweight Championship Elimination Chamber. Uh, and we're going to continue on with our Ring of Honor versus TNA matches in our main event when Kevin Owens representing Ring of Honor takes on Bobby Roode representing TNA in a tables match. Rocking some gimmicks. Love a good gimmick match. And table match does work okay on this as well. There's, there's a lot of matches that work really dodgily on this game, but table match seems to be okay. Um, but we'll give it another try here this evening. Like I said, this is going to be a six-man table match. Six-man elimination table, of course, at Shabby Mania. I'm really looking forward to that now. So we've only got, well, three episodes included in this one for Shabby Mania, which is going to be a 10-match pay-per-view. Going to be uploaded over two videos because of how big and epic it's going to be. Another handshake is. Let me know this game, I'll tell you. Why is there handshakes? It makes no sense in this feud, but the game decides that it keeps wanting to do it. Why not? Let it do it, why not? Thatcher going the assault straight away, then sending Shibata face-first into the turnbuckle. Then rocking him with that Russian leg sweep. Nice arm drag there by Shibata. Now bringing Thatcher back up to his feet. And Shibata is a very dangerous man as well. I was talking about how Lorcan versus... Oh my god, look at that. Suplex backbreaker. I was talking about how um, brutal Lorcan versus Suzuki 1-1 one -one was going to be. You just think about this match. Uh, Shibata is a man who almost ended his own career when he headbutted Kazuchika Okada. It just shows how stiff of a man he is to do that sort of stuff, doesn't it, really? A spinning heel kick there by Shibata on Thatcher. Taking Thatcher up, but he flipped his way out the back into a Russian leg sweep. Great action here. Great way to start off an episode of Adrenaline as well. Of course, these two teams have been feuding since very early on in SWE, of course, with one minor alteration. Drew Gulak was part of the, uh, the American stable until... At the beginning of month number two, when he was decimated by Sekimoto and stretched out of the place. We haven't seen him since, but they soon brought in Walter to try and equal up the numbers. And Walter's done a pretty good job for them so far, to be honest. However, Walter was on the losing side last week, like I said, against Sekimoto. Fraction now slamming the face of Suzuki into that top turnbuckle. Suzuki rocked and drops face first into the mat. Thatcher now bringing Suzuki back up. Went for the boot in the gut, but Suzuki avoids it. But Thatcher spins around and catches him in that belly to back slam. 
and Thatcher drops into the pin. One. Wow, I need one count. Suzuki signaling there to Thatcher that he's going to have to do a hell of a lot more if he wants to get the pinfall here. Thatcher back up on his feet. Should I say Suzuki? Suzuki now catching Thatcher into the dragon screw. Of course, Suzuki, no stranger to a good submission maneuver, so weakening that knee is probably a good maneuver for him. And then locks in the sleeper hold straight away, and he's got Thatcher positioned very well. Now, Thatcher's got to think about this. He might not want to tap out here and lose, but at the same time, he doesn't want to take any injuries into that big six man tag table match in a few weeks' time. But he did manage to squeeze out a bat. Shibata with the reverse DDT now stalking Timothy Thatcher. Is Shibata signaling for the end? Oh, he got he went for the kick in the calf, but um, Thatcher caught him. And now Thatcher into a butterfly suplex. Into the pin. One, two. Oh, only a two count. I'm quite sure Thatcher thought he was going to win from that butterfly suplex, to be honest, but it was pretty close, in fairness. Shibata now taking Thatcher down with the arm drag. Now Shibata going for a pin again. Don't think he thought he was going to get the win there, but it just gives him a couple of seconds extra to try and recuperate while forcing Thatcher to exert more energy by kicking out of that. Thatcher now. Nice gut wrench suplex. Now Thatcher stalking Shibata once again. And Thatcher locks in the armbar. Like I was saying early on, is Shibata going to have to tap here? He does. Because like he doesn't want to lose, but at the same time, you've got to think about that match in a few weeks' time. If you walk into that with a damaged arm, that is going to make it much more difficult for you to be a real contribution for your team. And Timothy Thatcher does get the one-on-one -on -one victory then against Shibata. Interesting. So Sekimoto gets one for Japanese Strong Style. Thatcher gets one for Ring Kampf. Which means that it's 1-1 going into that final singles match in a couple of episodes time between Lorcan and Suzuki. It was an interesting match, pretty back and forth. Both men had opportunities to win it, but I must admit Thatcher was always just one step ahead in this match, wasn't he? Always just one step ahead and seemed to be in control when he needed to be. And that's a good win there for Timothy Thatcher and a great win for Ring Kampf and some great momentum moving forward towards Shabby Mania. This six-man elimination tables match could really go either way. I feel like whoever gets the first elimination is going to be in a very strong position. And here is our next match of the evening, a great tag team match. Rocking back for some retro TNA days as we see the Motor City Machine Guns taking on Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal. Of course, both these teams were quite strong in early TNA. I say teams, really, Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal. Team for a little bit, I think, didn't they? But there were more singles in the X Division. However, Motor City Machine Guns, probably my... F oh, I don't know. I, I always had them as my favourite team in TNA until Beer Money turned up. I think Beer Money were fantastic... One of my favourite parts of TNA's history was when they did the, the Best of Five series between Beer Money and Motor Seat Machine Guns. I think they were some of the best matches that TNA have ever put on, those five. And they were all different um, stipulations, weren't they? I think they had, a, they had a ladder match, they had like a no DQ match, they had a singles match, they had a, a Ultimate X match. It was really cool stuff they did. And here we go then, Jay Lethal and Sonjay Dutt. Like I said, I think they teamed for a while, but I think when I was watching it back in TNA in the early days, I seem to recall they were in a feud. Were they feuding over SoCal Val, maybe? It's supposed to be SoCal Val was in love with Jay Lethal, and then she married Sonjay Dutt. Something on them sort of lines. I can't remember that. Yeah, they were good friends for a long time, and then they went to enemies. And, uh, of course, Jay Lethal now, probably at the best point of his career, working in Ring of Honor. Uh, former Ring of Honor champion, former Ring of Honor television champion. And now he has a chance here to be in the inaugural PJ Tovey Tag Team Classic. And we are underway with Alex Shelley and Jay Lethal to start things off. So, of course, last week we had, I say last week, last episode, we saw Kaz and Daniels defeating Best Friends to qualify for the second round. And we also saw Aerostar and Dragon Lee defeat Cedric Alexander and ACH to qualify for the second round. So uh, 
Some interesting teams so far. Some pretty high-flying teams through to the second round. And I think either way, this will be a high-flying team as well. And, of course, we still have one more match for you later on in the first round. And that will be Kendrick and London taking on a special team that PJ Tovey has put together for us here this evening. And then, of course, next week we're going to have our first of the semi-finals. Um, I said it's not set necessarily. We are going to draw it out of a hat, so we'll find out who the teams are going to be next week in the semis. Then we'll have another semi on week number four, episode number four of this month. And then, of course, the finals will take place at Shabby Mania. Which, have I done that yet? Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. So I just realised that we were one match short on the on the pay-per-view, but we're not because it's the PJ Tovey Classic Final. Obviously. There we go. We've got 10 matches to the pay-per-view now. It's really cool, actually. And don't forget as well, we also have for you um, another Elimination Chamber qualifier here this evening as Ricochet takes on Leo Rush. Of course, we saw Roderick Strong added into that Elimination Chamber last week when he defeated Desmond Xavier. That's terrible. I saw that. The move for the clothesline completely missed him, didn't he? And like I said, um, PJ Toby's been very clever here in how he's done it. He's um, he's managed to persuade quite a few names who probably wouldn't have been involved in the cruiserweight division. Uh, they sort of look a little bit higher up the card uh, when they can, but because of what's involved in this cruiserweight championship match and the the history of the first ever cruiserweight championship elimination chamber, he's managed to persuade. Quite a few big names be involved in this tournament that probably would have not looked to be involved in the past, if that makes sense. Like I say, they would have had their eyes a little bit further up the card, but coming up to the pay view as well, a lot of these people know that they have to get themselves on Chabby Mania at some, in some way. And that Cruiserweight Championship Elimination Chamber is a good way for people like Roderick Strong, because in fairness, without that match, what would Roderick Strong be doing, R Rodericky? What would Roderick Strong be doing at the pay-per-view? Of course, there's not a lot out there for him at this point in time. Uh, nothing against Roderick Strong. It's just the way the feuds are built up and so forth. That, um, yeah, it's been pretty pretty crazy. And PJ Tommy does have some matches that he will be announcing later on this evening. So uh, do keep an eye out for that as well. That'll be a couple of matches time. He'll be announcing um, a few of the matches for our Shabby Mania pay-per-view. As Sanjay Dutt now stalking Chris Saban. And he looks to hit the Salido. Stole the standing slice bread. There's the pin. But Shelley's in very quickly to break it up. Jay Lethal um, was just too slow there getting across to block Shelley off, to be honest. And now it looks like Saban's going to go for a standing slice bread. I think his is a bit better place, though, to be honest. There's the pin. One. And lethal again very quickly across the ring this time. And I've always said, haven't I? I said about it last week as well. The um, the defense of a pin is so slow. It's so frustrating on this game. But there goes lethal to the outside off that power bomb. If Saber can get a pin here, they might have a chance of going through in this one. Saber knees up. Nice drop kick as well. What's Saber going to go for now? A big forearm in the corner. Like I say, Lethal still down the outside. If Saban can go for the big pinning manoeuvre. Over the top. Oh, nice. Leg drop against the back of the neck. And Saban in control of this one. But he needs to get the pin. See if he can get the pin now. No, he's not going to go for it. Lethal was still down. Oh, but Dutt playing possum there in the corner. King Saban over to his own corner. This will be a chance for Dutt to make the tag into Jay Leaf, and he does. Nice over the top cutter and a kick in the back. Good bit of teamwork there by Dutt and Lethal. And Lethal was not paying much attention there, and Saban was able to make the tag into Alex Shelley, who just got taken straight down there by Jay Lethal. And Lethal now, boom, flatliner. Wow. Why has he not gone for the pin? Saban's down on the outside. You just hit your opponent with a, a massive manoeuvre. Should have gone for the pin there. Lethal might live to regret that. Lethal snap suplex now on 
Alex Shelley as well. Saban starting to stir on the outside, but still not up on the apron. Front chancery now and oh nice, the armbar over the top to get even more purchase on that. Oh, Saban still down on the outside. Is Shelley gonna be able to re oh Shelley does able to break free. Sort of rolls it through. Nice reverse DDT there once again by Jay Lethal. This really could go either way this match, couldn't it? Jay Lethal breaking free and Saban is finally back up on the apron. So back and forth here, isn't it? Both Shelly and Lethal both go for several manoeuvres, but it ends up being Lethal who comes out on top of that normal light suplex. Another drop kick to the, the back of the neck of Shelly. Slamming him arm first into the mat as well. Big forearm. Oh, jawbreaker there on Jay Lethal. Looking for the ace crusher, but Lethal throws him off. Nice forearm. And then clothesline to the outside by Lethal. Is he going to go for it here? He does over the top and... Oh, catches Shelley. But straight away, Saban taking Lethal out. <coughs> and Saban... I was going to throw Lethal into the ring, but he was too busy glitching out against the apron. As you do. Now, what would happen if this finishes a counter? I'm not quite sure what would happen here, to be honest, if this finishes a counter. We'd have to restart the match. We need a winner, really, don't we? Otherwise, we just have to give someone a buy into the final, which we don't really want to do. Oh, nice. Nice inseguri there by Shelley. And now Shelley stalking Jay Lethal's super kick right to the face. Wow. There's the pin. One, two, only a two count. Wow. I was going to say uh, Sanjay Dutt was slow into the ring, but Sabin didn't make it until after the pin was broken. Lethal, oh, getting caught with the elbow in the face there by Shelley. Shea now catches Lethal into that flatliner out of nowhere. Alex Shelley in control, but again, you need to take advantage when your opponent's down like this. Shelley's showing great strength here, just shoulder blocking Lethal down. Shelly now up to the top. Catching Lethal with the double axe handle. Shelly once again bringing Lethal back up to his feet. What's he looking for now? Or oh, hooking the outside leg into a suplex. Clever maneuver that one. By hooking the outside leg, you sort of tense up the side of the body. So when you drop him in a suplex, the muscles are tightened. It becomes a lot more painful. Shelly now reverse DDT slamming Jay Lethal back first into the mat. There's the pin in to Chris Saban. Hail Saban. Of course, for, was he former? He was former TNA champion, wasn't he? Didn't really work as well as they thought it was going to do. That he was doing this massive um, comeback, wasn't he, from his injury and so forth, and just didn't really work out as well as TNA thought it was going to. I don't think. He just wasn't very likeable, was he? He sort of started off being quite likeable, but I think it was just too much. And that's what you get a lot with WWE as well. They try and force someone on you so much that it becomes tedious. Same bringing Lethal back up to his feet into the Ace Crusher. Wow, what an Ace Crusher that was. But again, no pin. Same bringing Lethal back up, and wow, Lethal is busted open badly. Every time Motor City Machine Guns have gone for that tag team manoeuvre from the corner, it's not worked out. Lethal now taking... Oh, saving up and... What is Lethal going for? This match is definitely going the length, isn't it? Superplex to the outside. Wow. Thing is, Lethal's just done so much damage to himself as well. Now Lethal needs to get Saban back in the ring and get this pin. No, Saban's just launched Lethal back into the ring. Oh, but Sanjay Duck catching Saban on the outside and doing some damage. 
This is where the game starts to get a bit glitchy as well. I've noticed this a few times. Not so much glitchy, it's just that sometimes the, uh, the non-legal opponent keeps fighting people on the outside for so long that they end up um, getting counted out. It's really frustrating. Nice big elbow there, rocking the spirit of the Macho Man Randy Savage. There's the pin by Lee for... Oh, duh, why are you walking so bloody slow? No wonder these tag team matches don't work. He just casually walked into the ring like nothing was going on. Big neck breaker there by Lethal. Is he going to go for the pin again? Can he crawl over and drop into the pin? Lethal bringing Saban back up to his feet. Into the flatliner once again. He's not going for a pin. See, these are the sort of tag matches that make me very frustrated with this game. They should have really finished about five minutes ago. There was there was decent pins and everything. It was just um It's just a poor AI of the defending non-legal tag team partner when the pin's there. Saban then willing. Lethal back up to his feet. There's a diving forearm, but it wasn't hit very well, was it? Not very well at all. Big clothesline by Lethal. Saber now sending Lethal into the corner once again. But again, every time they try and get any offense in that corner, it doesn't work. There's a flatliner once again by Lethal, wow. How many times is he going to hit that Lethal? And how many times is he not going to go for the pin as well? Looks like he's going to go for the Alabama Slam, which he hits. But is anyone actually going to go for a pin? That's the big question here. Lethal does finally go for a pin. He's blocked away nicely in the corner, glitched into the corner. It's only a two count still. And Saber fights back again. It's bloody crazy, isn't it? I don't have a bloody superplex in the outside. I'm getting bored here. Come on. Have a proper match. Where's the bloody ending? I don't think either of these teams deserve to go through the next bloody round this way, do they? Come on! Get back in the ring! How is nobody winning this bloody match yet? There have been so many finishes, there's been OMG moments, there's been everything, but nobody seems to be the bloody win it. Vince are never given this much time. Oh great, a flatliner. That's, that's original, isn't it? Not even hit six of them already in this match, is it? Lethal front chancery now. Right, going for the submission. This could be all. Submissions at this point in the match are generally quite good. Is Saban going to tap? He's got to. He's got to tap. He's not going to, is he? Nope. Lethal now bringing Saban back up to his feet then once again. Well, I think we should put time limits on these matches, shouldn't we, really? Because it's been going a good 15 minutes now, at least. We go, Motor City Machine Guns rocking at some New Day-esque tag team manoeuvres. And Jay Lethal's really taking a beat into the chest, isn't he?
There's the pin by Shelly. Saving, saving does stay in the ring. Oh, why is that not a free count? That was our best chance so far, but we're out on the outside. If Shelly can hit a big maneuver here on Lethal, we could get the pin. Why are you going for the dirty pin? One. I hate the way the dirty pin is so slow as well. It's like the referee doesn't start counting until both of your legs are up on the rope. It's like he's waiting for you to get in position before he actually starts the pin. I'd never flatliner. I've seen more flatliners this match than I have seen in the entire universe mode so far. Shelly drops an elbow on the inside of the leg of Sanjay Dutt and just keeps walloping that knee with the right hands. Shadow sending Lethal into the corner. Come on! Bloody somebody win this bloody match! Drop kick suplex combination. Saban taking Lethal up on his shoulders, dropping him neck first across that top rope. Big right hand, but Lethal fighting back. He's going to go for another flatliner, any chance? No, up on his shoulders. Saban fights free into reverse DDT. Drop kick to the back of the head. And now wrenching back at the arm of Lethal. Oh, and an arm breaker as well. Does Saban have a, an arm submission that he can lock in? He doesn't want to get a chance there. Here's a jawbreaker by Lethal. Who might have been going for another flatliner there because that's his favourite manoeuvre, but uh, Saban broke free. Now Lethal reversing as well. I'm going to run out of electric by the time I match finishes. Wow, there we go. Suplex backbreaker by Lethal. This could be the end. Lethal now heading up top. He's looking for that big elbow once again. Sanjay Dutt needs to be on his game here. Needs to be on his game to get across the ring. There's the pin. This fucking game. The AI is so shite. It's so bad. He just had no ability to get across the ring and get that pit, get the uh, break the pin up. It was so bad. Pin now by Saban. One, two, and Saban's gonna win, now, isn't he? <laughs> My God, that last couple of seconds was just how crap this freaking AI is. It's so bad. Sanjay Dutt was so slow to get across the ring to break up the pin, even though he got in the ring earlier. He picked a really random path, and then when it got to a point where he had to. Um, he had to break the pin. He just stood there looking at it. It's just, it's just a sum up of everything that's wrong with tag team matches in this game, that was. That was a real surmise of what is wrong. But there you go. Motor seat machine guns are through to the semi-finals of the PJ Toby Classic. And that's only one of the tag team matches they have you to see. There's still another one to come. God. I hope I've got the uh, I hope I've got the length to go this long, I tell you. But there we go. Up next though is for you our feast and fired match. That should be pretty interesting. One man gets a shot at Samoa Joe and the other one leaves forever. And the other one gets nothing because it's worth a triple crap. And here we go then straight into that match. So we've got Enzo Amore, Chavo Guerrero and Shark Boy. I say the winner will get a chance at Samoa Joe's Adrenaline Championship next week. When I say a chance, it's probably not going to be much of a chance, is it? Um, and then of course the loser will be gone from SWE forever. And who knows, it could be this man right here. And of course, this man, sacked from WWE now. I don't think he's actually been... I think the investigation's still going. I think someone told me the other week that, um, that he'd been proven innocent, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think the investigation, as far as I'm aware, is still ongoing with... Enzo Moray's situation. Um, I could say he was sacked from WWE not because of what he had done, um, or may have done, allegedly. He was sacked from WWE for not informing them that he was under investigation because it's cast as a serious thing he's under investigation for. And because he wasn't open and honest and told anybody, um, of course that caused problems. Let me Google it now. 
Enzo Aramori. What's he up to, old Enzo? Uh, let's check his Wikipedia page, shall I tell you? Um, okay. La 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 la. He was suspended due to violation of the zero policy for matters involving sexual harassment and sexual assault. Uh, in an interview with TMZ, a woman named Philomena, which is a, which is a strange name, um, Okay, when the TMZ documentary came out, he was released the same day by WWE. Okay, yeah, so nothing... He's denied all allegations, but nothing has been... Uh, according to Wikipedia, anyway, nothing has actually been done as of yet. No, um, no sort of result has come yet. It's all still open. I bet Big Cass was happy. I'm not going to be stuck with him anymore. He's not tweeted at all, though, uh, Enzo Morris, since that situation. Which is interesting. And here comes Chavo Guerrero. Otole. That's a bit of a dick move, isn't it? Apparently, the WWE are about to announce a pay-per-view in Australia that's going to seat 100,000 people. Yet they've not been to the UK in years. It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. So we've been waiting for a big show in the UK for years. We get these uh, live stuff, don't we? But it's just not really... Um, it's not really that great, is it, really? Oh, I've never actually been to one of the UK live shows. Either. The WWE. I've been to um, I've been to like other shows. I've been to like um, local shows. I've been to a TNA show in the UK and everything like that. But um, I just never really justified the money with WWE because they're they're so expensive to go to. It's just a bit um, and you can end up right up in the bloody hills, can't you? You can end up miles away from anywhere being able to not be able to see very well at all so it's it'd be nice to be there I suppose but at the same time whether it's worth it or not the thing is if it was a good old show if it was a pay-per-view or something like that that was worth going to watch then I probably would do but if it was going to be something like a I don't know like a a live show or a house show then probably not worth it even Raw and Smackdown not that much crazy stuff happens to Raw and Smackdown anymore does it really I want a proper pay-per-view I want to see something interesting I want to see I don't know, like a, a good old match, like a championship chain or something like that would be pretty cool. Nice spiral tap sent on there by Chavo. has gone straight on the pin on Enzo, and Enzo ooh, almost lost his place there on the bloody SWE roster. So slow, kicking out of that. He's not even taking that much damage yet as well. And can you imagine one of these guys facing Samoa Joe? I'm afraid that... I feel like the best situation in this match would to obviously be not the person who gets pinned and not the person who wins the match because the person who wins the match has to face Samoa Joe one on one which is not a situation anybody wants apart from of course AJ Styles we found out in the last episode but uh, of course the loser ends up leaving SWE for good so I think well depends how brave you are if you really believe in your own ability then uh, then go for it go for the pin but I don't think any of these three men would fare very well in the match against Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe versus Shark Boy would be pretty cool, though. And of course, Shark Boy retro TNA as well. Give me a shell, yeah. Chavo bringing Shark Boy back up to his feet and looking for the scoop slam, but Shark Boy falls out the back. Big boot in the back of the leg of Chavo and into that over the top cutter as Enzo slowly getting back up to his. F well. Trying to get back up to his feet. Enzo's done nothing in this match so far. And of course, since it is triple threat, it is no disqualification. That's the standard rules in all triple threat matches. Uh, Sharkboy does have a table. 
not quite sure how to use the table. He just like picks it up and throws it down. I think he's just using it for, for weightlifting by the looks of it. And what is up with... Um, we're getting all the dodginess here, aren't we? Chavo and Enzo, they just get in and out of the ring over and over again for no apparent reason. Enzo gets his first bit of offense in a match, which was that drop kick. But then gets caught by Sharkboy with that spinning neck breaker. Sharkboy into the pin, but Chavo breaks it up straight away. Chavo, obviously, very um, very confident in his own ability, as has been. That's normal like suplex there by Sharkboy on Chavo. But Chavo, nice. Drop toe hole, taking Sharkboy down face first. Now into a reverse suplex on Sharkboy as Enzo slowly gets back to his feet on the outside. And Enzo might be doing exactly what I was saying, just sort of trying to hide, trying to get out of the way. As um, Sharkboy here looking for the free amigos. And Enzo is going to pick his moment to come back into this match. And catches Chavo with the drop kick in the back of the leg, but it didn't really work too well. And Chavo. Drops straight into the pin on Enzo. It's only enough for the one count. Big boot in the spine of Enzo. He's back up to his feet though and hits a, a massive right hand. And just stepping up on the gut of Enzo. And uh, Enzo looks like, is he trying to head up the top or is he just going to walk into the corner? I just don't. I think we've had some issues here and there in episodes recently, but this one just seems to personify everything that's wrong with this bloody game at the moment. It's just really crazy stuff. There's a stunner, a stunner by Sharkboy. Enzo tries to steal the win, and Sharkboy tries his best to glitch out the way and not break the pin, but he did eventually. Spiked DDT by Sharkboy on Enzo, and Enzo now rolling to the outside. So Sharkboy hit Chavo with the. The Stone Cold Stunner. Sharkboy slowly getting back up to his feet and Chavo decides against the dive. Oh, that was bad, wasn't it, by Chavo? Completely missed the clothesline. So we've still got some pretty good matches coming up for you after this one, of course. Like I said, Ricochet versus Leo Rush in the Cruiserweight Elimination Chamber Qualifier. Uh, we got uh, Kendrick in London, as I say. Paul Kendrick and Brian London there. Paul Kendrick and Brian London. Oh, there's a Shark Boy with a pin on Enzo in it for a two count. Uh, Kendrick and London taking on a surprise team that PJ Tovey's put together for us in this PJ Tovey Classic. And there's the stunner by Shark Boy on Enzo. There's the pin. And Chavo's just going to sit there and stare at it. And there we go. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This game. There we go, Sharkboy gets the victory, and Enzo takes the L, which means that Enzo is now done with SWE for good. This is the last time you'll ever see Enzo Amore step inside an SWE ring. He is done and dusted. Feast or fired. Sharkboy gets the feast, which is a match against Samoa Joe next week in the main event. And Enzo is now fired. Na 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 na. Hey. Goodbye. Just that ending was so dodgy, wasn't it? It's just the way that it's the way the game works. Chavo, of course, was midway through the um, the animation of getting back up. It just looks stupid because if you look at this, Chavo literally just stares at the pin. Maybe Chavo was doing what I said, though. Maybe maybe Chavo was looking at it as in the state of. If Enzo gets pinned, I know my job's safe. I don't get the opportunity against Samoa Joe, but I know my job is safe. Maybe that's what Enzo was. Uh, maybe that's what Chavo was doing. Maybe I've not given Chavo enough um, enough props for how clever he was there. Maybe. Maybe I've just figured out how to sell that action. I don't know. I'm trying my best. Try my best. And here is that next match of the evening. Like I said, Ricochet versus Leo Rush. The winner goes in the chamber to join. Both Rey Mysterio, who has been the Cruiserweight Champion through the entirety of this universe mode. And of course, uh, Roderick Strong, who defeated Desmond Xavier last week. So Leah Rush still not really done much in NXT, is he? Whether that would have been any different if it wasn't for the Emma situation, who knows? Uh, there was some rumours knocking around. Let me have a look, actually. There was some stuff going around the other week about Leah Rush leaving... Um 
leaving uh, TNA, wasn't there? Because I think he took all of his NXT stuff away from his channel, uh, from his Facebook page. There he is, Man of the Hour. The Leo Rush, what were you up to then, mate? So it doesn't say anything about NXT now. All his pictures have got nothing to do with NXT. Is that is that for the um Wow, is that Patrick Clark? No. Is that him? Let me have a look at this. Velveteen Dream. I thought Patrick Clark came from Tough Enough. Yeah he did. Early career. Um no yeah it was, yeah. It was Patrick Clark. So Patrick Clark was a team with Leah Rush in MCW, and they were the MCW Tag Team Champions. And uh, Patrick, I knew it was, yeah. I thought the picture was correct. Patrick Clark made a number of appearances for various American independent promotions, including, well, that's stupid, isn't it? There you go. In, in addition to MCW, Clark made numerous appearances for various American, American, independent promotions during 2015 including WXW who are German and Combat Zone Wrestling mm. so he's doing pretty well for himself like I said former tag it just yeah I just I just saw that picture of um of them to together it's a Combat Zone Wrestling ring you can tell because it's got yellow ropes yeah they're the tag team champions I did not know that. Here you go, 10th of January. We, in um, in inverted commas, are NXT? Question mark. Maybe the grass is greener on the other side. One man's heaven is another man's hell. I think maybe it's time to find my own heaven. So that's what he put on Twitter on the 10th of January. And that sounded very ominous to me that he might be uh, looking to leave NXT. But who knows? At this point in time, he's not been released. I don't think he's really appeared on many... I think he's appeared once or twice, but I don't think he's actually... I think he's appeared once on TV, hasn't he? And been squashed by someone or other. And, yeah, it's not been going too well for Leo Rush, is it, really? In fairness. Oh. Uh, talking of that, Ricochet just went for a 450 splash there to some man who was standing. Which is possibly one of the stupidest things anyone has ever done in the entire world. But there you go. Nice backstabber there by Ricochet. And wow, look where Rush is positioned. It's quite early in the match, but Rush is trying to roll out the way. But he's not rolled far enough and Ricochet hits him with a big six face. Is that it already? Can't be, surely. It bloody well is. Wow, Ricochet is going in to the Elimination Chamber. Wow, Ricochet Strong and Rey Mysterio. What a match that is looking like already. But how has this match ended so quick? Ricochet on one here. Realise he doesn't get paid by the hour. And demolishes Leo Rush. Well. I can just imagine, like, in the air during the second flip, Ricochet shouting, This one's for Emma! <laughs> oh, what a boo. But there we go, Ricochet absolutely dominated that match. And, like I said, is going on to join both Rey Mysterio and Roderick Strong inside the Steel Cage. Well, inside the Steel Elimination Chamber, should I say. Next week, we have another big uh, qualifier for you. And then episode number four, we've got two qualifiers. But there's going to be some amazing names in this tournament. Like I said, PJ Toby's managed to persuade a few people that may not have been a part of the Cruiserweight division so far in uh, Adrenaline. But uh, this option of being part of this very first cruiserweight elimination chamber seems to have really um give a few people some ideas so time now to have a look at a few of the matches that have been announced already well are being announced right now shall i say for shabby mania as we found out last week we're going to have aj styles putting his spot on the adrenaline roster up against samoa joe for a chance to win the adrenaline championship at shabby mania and of course that will be our big main event but on top of that, we also have a big 
Tag Team Championship rematch. As we see the Kings of Wrestling, fresh champions, of course, win the belts at Chaos Fury, Cesaro and Cassius Ono. Redefending the championships against the former champions, Red Dragon, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. And this one will be a Tag Team TLC match. That's going to be absolutely awesome. But that is not all. Another huge match, another huge rematch will be Daniel Bryan defending the Intercontinental Championship against Adam Cole. Now, of course, there was a lot of controversy about this match at Chaos Fury. Uh, interference from both both men's tag teams, I suppose, Kings of Wrestling and Red Dragon. And, of course, Daniel Bryan utilising a chair as well. So to make things a little bit more fair, Peter Tobey has decided to make this one a 30-minute Ironman match. But to make sure nobody interferes in the match, this 30-minute Ironman match will take place within the Hell in a Cell structure. That's right, a 30-minute Iron Man Hell in a Cell match. What a cracking match that is going to be for the Intercontinental Championship. And here we go then into our second of the PJ Tovey Classic Tag Team matches here this evening. I can only hope to hell this one works a little bit better than the one earlier on. The one earlier on the season wasn't too bad, it just went too long. And when it goes too long, it just becomes quite... It, it just becomes annoying. I always like to make sure the matches are as good as possible for you guys, but sometimes a game just decides that it doesn't want to do that for us. But there you go. Either way, we've got Kendrick and London here for you, and they're taking on a team that PJ Tovey has managed to bring here into Adrenaline. He's saying that one of them uh, is going to make his first appearance on Adrenaline, whereas the other one has appeared already in the season. So who is it? I've got no idea at this point in time. But he seems very excited to get them signed up and bring them in here. As is Kendrick. Oh, sugar. I don't think Kendrick's going to be that excited anymore, is he? Wow. Um, Kendrick, you might want to uh, just leave, just give up. That might be the best bet for this one because I'm sorry, but Michael Elgin and Brian Cage are going to absolutely rip you to shreds, my man. Wow. What a team to bring in here. For the PJ Toby Classic. Of course, we have had Michael Elgin already in this universe mode. He's part of Team Canada for the um, World Cup last month. But Brian Cage making his way here to Adrenaline to accompany Michael Elgin in this PJ Toby Classic Tag Team Tournament. And I feel like we've just got ourselves some brand new favourites for this tournament. We've got Kaz and Daniels. We've got Motor City Machine Guns. We've got Aerostar and Dragon Lee. Wow. Elgin and Cage are going to offer a whole other dynamic to this tournament. Everyone else in this tournament so far is quite high-flying, to be honest. As is Kendrick and London. Um, so how will Kendrick and London get on against Elgin and Cage? Well, not very well to start things off as a backbreak straight away by Elgin. And then just launches Kendrick over his shoulders, just showcasing the strength that Elgin has. And now straight over into a Boston Crab on Brian Kendrick. If I was Kendrick, I'd just tap right now. And if I was London, I'd be hoping Kendrick's going to tap right now because oh, bloody Elgin and Cage, it's not a match you want to be involved in. But then again, Kendrick and uh, getting some offense and Kendrick quite cleverly there to get out of the ring as early as possible and then letting Paul London take the brunt of that T-bone suplex. Elgin now taking London up onto that top. Oh, and just brings him off with that power bomb, using a single arm for that power bomb. And Elgin here trying to move the referee out of the way as he looks to potentially go for a spirit. Oh, wow, spear through the middle rope. Elgin showing he's not just strength, he does have some agility to him as well. And now being absolutely dominant so far. We're going to see Brian Cage now. There is the tag. Oh, Elgin just... Oh, wow. Brian Cage is no small man. And Elgin has picked him up like he was nothing. And has dropped his body weight straight across the neck of Paul London. Who tries to use his speed to roll out the way. But Cage is having none of it. Cage now bringing London back up to his feet now up on the shoulders. 
cage. Oh, slamming London into the turnbuckle pad. And London just crumples back to the mat. As Cage now stalking. Elbows straight across the spine of London. And now Cage going to do some, a few press-ups. Obviously, this match is not as difficult for him as he was hoping. So he's had to uh, incorporate some of his workout into this one. Surprised Cage is not somebody who WWE have looked to pick up again. Well, they might have done for all I know, I suppose. But um, he's just got the look. He's got the ability. He's got everything that I think TNA, uh, WWE, should I say, would want. But, of course, he was originally from FCW. Um, left FCW, went onto the indie scene. So, whether he left with bad blood, I've got no idea. But um, he's definitely developed so much over the last few years. It just seems like such an obvious move for WWE to go for a man like that, to be honest. But Especially Vince. Vince is obsessed with jacked men like this, isn't he? As Cage now looking for that gory special. Boom, hits it. Wow. London has been demolished here. There's the pin. I think the best thing Kendrick can do is just not come in and break this. No, Kendrick does come in and break it. And Kendrick... Kendrick just headbutted Michael Elgin. That is possibly the stupidest thing anybody's ever done in their entire life. Kendrick just headbutted Michael Elgin. Brian Cage now pinging London into the corner, and I bet London's sitting there now thinking, I wish to hell that Kendrick had not broke this pin up. He would have been quite happily stayed down after that, I think, as another big super falcon arrow in from the outside. By Brian Cage on Paul London. The referee's gonna have to look at London. He might have to the um, he might have to stop this match just for for health reasons. Oh, Steiner screwdriver. Boom! What a bloody move! I love that move. Steiner screwdriver. There's the pin by Cage and Elgin. So slow once again. It's just crazy how these people are so slow to get across and try and break up pins. Nice spinning neck breaker there by Cage. On Kendrick and now Cage is taking out both members of Kendrick and London. Cage. Well, Kendrick's down the outside now, so if Cage gets another big manoeuvre here on London, instead of actually just trying to back into the corner, uh, it might be enough for him to get the win. It's a big Russian leg sweep. Is that enough to keep London down? What are you doing? What is Brian Cage doing? He's just like wandering around. He can't try and figure out his path. He wants to get to Elgin and make the tag, but he can't figure out why London's on the floor, what he needs to do. What's this on the outside? A double backbreaker by Cage and Elgin. He would just go through these little states every now and again where, for some reason, nothing seems to want to work for him, does it? Cage now on the outside, dead lifted up into a sit-out powerbomb on Paul London. Paul London is being absolutely decimated here. Absolutely decimated by Brian Cage and Michael Elgin. Referee now up to a five count as Cage bringing London back up to his feet. Cage sends London into the middle of the ring. And it looked like London was looking to try and go... Oh my god, he... Lift him up into a backdrop. Like he was trying to get the tag from Kendrick. And Kendrick didn't look too interested in getting that tag. I must admit. But as he was crawling towards Kendrick. You saw Cage just grab him in that German. Hoist him up to a backdrop. Cage now knocking over five press ups. Again taking London up. I oh got another Steiner screwdriver. Referee man. You're going to have to stop this. Again, Kendrick was so quick across the ring to break it. And Cage is launching Kendrick to the outside, but now Cage needs to get the pin here. He needs to go for the pin. Kendrick's down. In comes Elgin. Does Elgin have a finisher maneuver here to hit? Now Kendrick's getting back up, though. There's just so little AI. There's no intelligence in the people to, to try and defend the pin or... Like a few years ago, there used to be the whole mechanic where when, when you hit your finisher manoeuvre, your opponent came across the ring and, um, and took the other opponent off the apron. Now, that worked pretty well. 
what is going on here? What is what is Brian Cage doing? Brian Cage is going for a tag team animation. What is he doing? What is going on with this pretty game today? Brian Cage has just got into a tag team maneuver animation by himself where nobody else is in the ring. Is he now counted as a legal man? What is going on with this game? It is broken. It does. I must admit, when you get quite far into these universe modes, they, still, they do start to get a bit more haywire the further you go on, which is why every now and again we have to have a refresh. And, of course, like I said, we are on our last in-game month anyway. Pin here by Elgin this time. And again, Kendrick across, breaking it up. And oh, this could be it now then. Oh, Brian Cage just launching Kendrick. And Elgin takes London up into an Elgin bomb. And that is going to have to be the free count there, isn't it? Paul London has absolutely been decimated here this evening. And the Unbreakable Machines on their debut here on Adrenaline have absolutely slaughtered Kendrick and London. Which means we're going to see some more of the Unbreakable Machines then. In the semi-finals of this competition, at least the semi-finals competition. But in fairness, who's going to stop these two guys? We've got Kaz and Daniels, Aerostar and Dragon Lee, and the Motor City Machine Guns. Who's going to stop these guys? And of course, we don't know yet what the semi-finals matches are going to be. We're going to find out uh, next week, I suppose, when we get our first semi. Exactly who is facing who. But this is a very successful debut for the Unbreakable Machines. And here is your main event, then another Ring of Honor versus TNA match. Kevin Owens representing Ring of Honor, Bobby Roode representing TNA and tonight they face off in a tables match now at the pay-per-view we are going to have an eight-man tag match which I'm absolutely terrified about because this game is awful in eight-man we've seen what it's like in a two-man tag eight-man tag is going to be absolutely diabolical isn't it but we're going to go for it anyway hopefully if I record it enough times we'll get a half decent match and of course that will be Ring of Honor versus TNA we found out last week that Sami Zayn is representing Ring of Honor and TNA has Austin Aries. And this week we now know that it's Sami Zayn joined by Kevin Owens for Ring of Honor. And it's TNA's Austin Aries joined by Bobby Roode. Of course, Austin Aries could have really gone either way, but he decided to represent TNA in this tournament. It's probably where he got his biggest break. He's probably where he's got his most, um, most momentum, I suppose. It was TV, wasn't it, I suppose, whereas Ring of Honor's... Ring of Honor is TV, isn't it? But it's closed circuit television, isn't it? So you only get it in certain areas in America. I don't think you get Ring of Honor on TV in all places in America, do you? And there's Kevin Owens, of course. Now, joining Kevin Owens, he's fellow Canadian. Part of the victorious Team Canada from last month. Of course, Mr. Glorious Bobby Roode. That's an interesting one. I just thought we're going to have an eight-man tag. How's that going to work with entrances? Because it doesn't, does it? Hmm. That's the stupid thing with the game this year. They created eight-man tags, but they didn't create four-man entrances. There's a few four-man entrances hidden on the game. Like, for example, Sanity's a hidden four-man entrance. And Wyatt Family's a hidden four-man entrance. But if you step out of those, it really um, just doesn't work, does it? So maybe, uh, I don't even want to have individual entrances because it just takes too long, especially an eight-man tag, got eight entrances then. I will just, we'll just let it, we'll let it out of it, guys. Did pretty well, Bobby Ruder, near the main roster so far, United States champion. Had a few decent, well, I say, some barely decent feuds. Uh, I think if he was on Raw, he might be doing, I don't know, actually. Raw, you probably get lost a bit more in the talent, and I think at the moment Miz is doing such a fantastic job as the Intercontinental Champion that you couldn't really displace him. So maybe SmackDown is the best place for Bobby Roode, but at the same time, everything's just so written so badly, isn't it? it SmackDown just after the draft was absolutely incredible. It was absolutely spot on SmackDown just after the draft. And then over the past 18 months, 
it's gradually got worse and worse and worse and I know a lot of people are blaming the thing is I don't know if I necessarily blame um, Road Dog, who's currently doing a lot of the I think he's a head of creative on Smackdown I don't say I necessarily blame him but the way that he acts on Twitter when people like mention the fact that they're not happy with the world thing, he, um, he just doesn't take anything on board he just thinks that everyone on Twitter's a troll which don't get me wrong a lot of people on Twitter are trolls but at the same time people are giving their genuine opinions and he just doesn't believe any of it he just thinks people are doing it just because they want to annoy him whereas these people are giving their genuine opinions that Smackdown at the moment is probably the worst show has been written for it for a while in fairness and are we interested in the six man challenge at, at fast lane I'm not I'm sorry you're throwing John Cena randomly in there it was the thing wrong a triple threat match between Owen Zayn and uh, AJ sounded interesting because I thought okay Owens and Sammy are together Meaning that chances are one of them would turn on the other one, leading to a uh, an Owens versus Zayn WrestleMania match, which would be pretty insane, and uh, allows uh, Nakamura then to face off against AJ Styles. But now, the thing that annoys me now as well, right, is that they've they're they're advertising AJ Styles versus Nakamura for WrestleMania. They're advertising that, but there's a six man championship match coming at Fastlane, which six people in the ring. The champion has got a small percentage of retaining his championship in that sort of box. So they're telling you already who's going to win that match. Because they're going after... Well, I hope... Don't get me wrong. I hope to God AJ does win that match. Because I do not want to lose Nakamura versus AJ Styles. That's, that for me is going to be the big seller for WrestleMania. Nakamura versus Styles has sold me WrestleMania so far. As long as they give it a decent amount of time... And I think it should go on as the main event as well. I think you should make Nakamura versus Zay in the main event. It should go on last. It should be given about 40, 45 minutes. And it would be an absolute wonder match that people remember for years to come. You put it early in the, early in the night and hold Reigns versus um, Brock for later in the night. I'm sorry, I'll be switching off. Thing is, WrestleMania, it, it's late in the UK. WrestleMania finishes about 5 or 6 in the morning for us. And when you're pretty tired, you're holding, holding out for quite some time. In my case, you've drunk quite a lot of beers in the process. When it gets to Lesnar versus Reigns, I'm sorry, but I'm sat there thinking, you know what, I can just go to bed now. I might watch this in the morning, I might not. I might just look at the results on Lords of Pain or something. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. As Rude looking for that glorious Death Valley Drive A's finishing maneuver on uh, TNA, of course. The Rude Bomb. This is a Rude Bomb boy. Rude bringing Owens back up to his feet. And so far, it's been a pretty simple match in the middle of the ring. Uh, pretty good back and forth, actually. Both guys showed some good action, but... No one yet trying to utilise the tables, he says, as Bobby Roode goes outside and grabs a table. Now, tables matches are quite interesting. Like I said, we do have a six-man tables match coming for you at the pay-per-view. Uh, Japanese Strong Style versus Ring Camp. Uh, but, of course, people still be wanting a few of these matches. Of course, last week, Austin Aries versus Sami Zayn was submission. This week, this is a tables match. Next week... We've got another two, another Ring of Honor versus TNA match for you. And the week after, we've got another Ring of Honor versus TNA match for you. And all of them are going to be interesting sort of gimmicky matches. We'd like a good gimmick match, why not? Kevin Owens now sending Bobby Roode face first into the turnbuckle. Roode shaken, and that table's set up pretty nicely. Wow. Rude able to just completely defy the laws of physics and gravity there by popping back up to his feet. Now dropping Owen to the flapjack. Glorious! Dropping an elbow. Now Rude bringing Owens back up or dropping him knee to the back of the head first into the mat. Owen's holding his face. It was very bloody painful, I must admit. 
Rude now slamming Owens back of the head first into the mat once again, dropping him elbow across the chest. Nice right hand in the gut there by Owens. Now into an unnecessary DDT, I like to call that one. See Kevin Owens there, sort of uh, taking the mickey out the glorious one. Ooh, I tell you what, Bobby Roode weren't far away from the table when he crashed the outside there. And tables on the outside do count, you know. Oh, nice acai splash. Okay, that's some freaky noises there. Well, the snow and the wind. Basically, where my computer's based, is like an old chimney. And in the chimney, there's a um, chimney. In the chimney, there's a, um, a vent. And when the wind comes across the top, it just creates like a howling noise, like a like a woman screaming in the distance. It's quite freaky, actually. A rude fighting back against Owens. I send him face first into the table, and oh, Owens been busted open here. Big chop by Rude on Owens. He drops back into the middle of the ring, but Owens has been busted open. Liquid energy running from the skull. Of Kevin Owens here. Nice double axe handle to the back there by Bobby Roode. Now Owens slowly getting back up to his feet as Roode once again sending him face first into the mat, and that's just going to open up the wound, make things more difficult. And of course, it it also um, makes it more difficult to see the blood constant in your eyes. It's a big, big disadvantage for Owens to be busted open this early in the match. Rude now is going to set the table up rather than being in the corner. So you don't see enough of these sort of uh, eliminations. You see a lot of a corner eliminations. One time I missed the. Um, oh, what was the best one I had last year? It was a. Um, it was a superplex elimination. That was the best one. It wasn't on purpose, it was complete luck, but it was so good. I think it was the Dudley boys, I think. But the place in that table is really glitchy now because they just keep spending each other into the end of it, which is not going to work, is it? Rude fighting back with that right hand and still that table looming for both of them. Owen sending Rude into the corner. Big, stiff clothesline to the corner. And now Owen's just choking Rude out while he's grounded. It's bringing Rude up, but Rude with the right hand right in the gut of Owens. Now Owens sending Rude face first into the turnbuckle. Owens going to go for it. He's going to go. Oh, I thought he was going to go for a suplex there. Because that table's quite nicely positioned for that suplex. If you'd thought about that. Owens paying no attention to the table whatsoever. Owens just wants to cause damage to Bobby Rude, which might not be the worst idea in the world, considering. Like I said about the um, the big match coming up for these guys. Eight-man tag at Shabby Mania. TNA versus Ring of Honor. Be rude. So then Owens... Okay, if you go for a superplex now, this could be very, very good. Nope. Send him into the other corner. And neither guy seems that interested in the table anymore. It's the way you win the match. I would have thought somebody would have tried to set it up in a decent position by now. Or at least gone for it. There we go. Rude now does look at the table. Decides to move it. Okay. Okay, that was a bit glitchy. Don't throw him into the bloody end again, for God's sake. Where's the intelligence in this bloody game? It doesn't work when you throw them into the end. We know this. You've done it 15 times now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This superplex could be it, you know. This could be it. Owens taking Rude up. Superplex. Oh, he's missed the bloody table. Oh, that would have been amazing. That would have been so good. Owens has got no interest in that table at all. Looking for a cannonball. Oh, no, he missed it. He ran at the wrong angle and missed the cannonball. 
Is Owens going to move the table somewhere? No, he's just going to keep going for Rude. Owens now bringing Rude back up to his feet. Uh, Owens maybe is now looking towards that table. Dragging Rude around to where he wants him, but Rude fighting back. And Owens is in a, uh, a poor place. Rude, look at the backdrop. Oh, I think he was aiming for the table, but Owens just about avoided it. Uh, Rude now bringing Owens back up to his feet. A good spine bust here would be good. Just throwing him gut first into the table over and over again. And Bobby Rude, there is the big spine buster. And there is the win for Team TNA. Bobby Rude spine busters Owens through the table. See, that was a good finish. That's the sort of stuff we like. That was the sort of stuff we like. And there we go. Great win here then for Bobby Roode again. Sort of evening up the numbers a bit. And there's that big spine buster putting Kevin Owens through the table. Yeah, so what we saw... Like we said, sorry. There was a good win last week for Sami Zayn for Ring of Honor. And now a good win here for Bobby Roode for TNA. 1-1 one, one, if you're keeping score. And a really good match as well. There was a, there was a few issues. I think in my opinion, I think Kevin Owens just struggled because Kevin Owens paid absolutely no attention to the table for the most part of the match. He just wanted to hurt Bobby Roode. Whereas Bobby Roode was much more intelligent in the long run. Picked his moments, picked his opportunities. Went for it a few times, but finally... Caught the big spine buster and put Owens through the table. So there we go then, guys. That is the end of this episode of Adrenaline. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do hit like and hit a subscribe as well. Uh, I probably won't upload anything now until next weekend. I'll hit the other two episodes up. I'm struggling a bit upload time-wise with work and so forth. So I've got to try and squeeze them in wherever I can. So yeah, probably I don't think there'll be a midweek one this week. But if there is, I will try my hardest to get one up for you. If not, then there'll be hopefully Saturday and Sunday next week will be the times to check it out. And then... Of course, after that, we should be ready for Shabby Media. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon for our next episode of SWE Adrenaline. Bye.